Welcome into the Miller's Edge. Christian Miller here along with Corey Miller, giving our reaction to Frank Reich being hired as the next head coach of the Carolina Panthers over Steve Wilkes. Uh, you know, Steve Wilkes, uh, who took over for Matt Rule after a one and four start, uh, went on to go six and six as interim head coach and, you know, was a unanimous choice by the players to be the next head coach, but unfortunately did not get the nod. Um, but, you know, did a number of great things. Uh, I just want to get your initial reactions on this. Yeah, you know, been here in Columbia, of course, uh, going on. I'm on radio every week uh, in Charlotte, uh, breaking down the Panthers. So I'm very close to, to what happens and what goes on. I'm on WFNZ uh, with Cal Bailey every week. So I follow, you know, I follow the search. I followed everything that's been going on uh, with Steve Wilkes. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised because I thought he was the favorite. You know, uh, everybody talked about, you know, Sean Payton, uh, would be the next head coach with the Panthers. Uh, you know, they would give up maybe a first round or two first round picks to get Sean Payton uh, in there as a head coach. But when that went through, uh, you know, I was like, it's Steve Wilkes' job. I mean, Steve Wilkes went, you're six and six. I mean, they fired Matt Rule after a slow start. Uh, Steve Wilkes, who's known as a defensive guy, defensive coordinator, who's had great success on that side of the ball. The defense continued to play well. Uh, but then this team went six and six, 500, and it came down to the last game of the season on the road, uh, playing Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. The winner would win the South, and the winner would go on to uh, play in the playoffs. Well, Tampa won that game. So here's a guy that has taken your organization and made it respectable. He made it prominent um, with the opportunity to win the South and in and, and the playoffs. Now, that didn't happen, but they were right there. Normally, when you have a firing during the course of the year, the locker room falls apart. Uh, everybody's packed, got the suitcases packed. The players are thinking about where they're going to be next year. They're talking to other players around the league, trying, you know, people lobbying and poaching. But this team stayed together, and that told me that Steve Wilkes was a, a man of the people, man of the locker room. He kept them together. They got rid of Christian McCaffrey. They got rid of the number two wide receiver. Um, you know, made some changes. They played better offensively. You know, Baker Mayfield was all over the place. Um, they and finally Sam Darnold comes back, and he was pedestrian, right? But he did a phenomenal job. Six and six with the team. When you get rid of C Mac, you send him away. You send your number two receiver away. But they began to run the football. They played physical at the line of scrimmage. I would say the offensive line got better. So why wouldn't you? The players, you, you alluded to this, the players supported him. They spoke out for him. Listen, I have no qualms at all against Frank Wright. I love him as a man, a person, a man of God. He's pastor churches. He's a great Christian man. You know, he's a great leader of men. He's won uh, a Super Bowl with the Eagles under Doug Peterson with the Philadelphia Eagles. He served there as two years. He, he's went to, to the Colts. He's dealt with Carson Wentz. He brought Carson Wentz from the Eagles over to the Colts with him. You know, he's dealt with that whole situation. Um, that didn't work too good. I mean, he had Phillip Rivers. He, he had Matt Ryan. So he's dealt with the plethora of quarterbacks that have had a level of great success in the league. But – but overall, 40 and 33 and one, I believe it's a record uh, that Frank Wright has had. He went to the playoffs 2018 and 2020. Bottom line for me, and this has been the scuttlebutt, scuttlebutt, excuse me. The bottom line is, I still think the NFL has to look at the minority coaching hire because Steve Wilkes couldn't have done really anything else but maybe make the playoffs. You know, would he have been the shoe in uh, lock for head coach had he made the playoffs? But here's another African-American coach that has done his due diligence, has been well-respected around the league and all this great stuff, and and yet he can't get the nod. Now, I know that he has hired a, uh, a legal service and all that to, to look into this whole thing. David Tepper, you know, didn't pull the trigger. He had the locker room respect. He had the guys playing hard for him. All he needed was a quarterback, which they still need. All he needs is an offensive coordinator with a great sharp pencil that could draw plays. And I think the Panthers are in great shape. He's from Charlotte. He, he's a Panthers guy. He loves the organization. Every He embodies everything that you would want in, in hiring a coach. And he's proven that he can do it. 
even when his back against the wall. So to me, that tells me a lot about Steve Wilk. So I look at it as though here we go again with the National Football League. Here we go again that the coaching hire, uh, the Rudy rule, all that stuff is satisfied. The two coaches that needs to be uh, brought in and having an interview, but at the same time, they're not getting the, the opportunity that I think they deserve. They're not getting the length of time when they do get the job. And we look at Houston, we look at Lovey Smith and coach before Lovey Smith. Now they're talking about bringing in D'Amico Ryans. Will be, they're hiring them. Even when they hire them, they don't get the opportunity to build their team. They're let go. That's a problem to me. That's a problem for the NFL. That's a problem in the hiring practices. And, and this is well-known, well-documented across the league. And that needs to continue to be looked at and changed because right now, for me, the evidence that Steve Wilkes uh, over, you know, Frank Wright, uh, you know, would have been okay with me. I thought it would have been a great hire. But I'm not mad at Frank Wright hiring because I think he's a great football coach. He's a quarterback whisperer. I, I do believe that. So, you know, I, I think they'll be fine going forward. My problem is just, again, with the hiring practices, what we see happening in the National Football League. And I still think it's not good. And I think it needs attention to be paid to. And I think it needs to change. And so, um, you know, uh, if it wasn't, then – we wouldn't see him hiring the league of practice if he didn't think something was wrong. We wouldn't have seen Brian Flores from Miami in his situation, although he's getting looked at by the Minnesota Vikings. I think now has been the next defense coordinator, somebody I just read. So, yeah, yeah, it's the Vikings. But it has to be better. That's all I'm saying. Things have to improve. It has to be better because there are worthy minority candidates out there that don't get the opportunity. And this, to me, is a great example when one has proven he can be a great head coach and proven that he can handle bad and tough situations, had the, 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 the respect and, and, and the support of his locker room. And you and I know how important that is. And he can lead these men. He's a great man, but he, he offered, as I close this, he offered a letter uh, and, and stated his, his opinions and thoughts with scripture in it. Um, he, you know, he disappointed, but he said he's still a Carolina Panther fan. He, he, he wishes uh, Frank Wright well, just this very, very uh, professional and respected uh, dude, man. And just uh, I feel bad for him because I think he did everything he needed to do to become the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. But unfortunately, the owner, David Tepper, saw otherwise. And, and, and I'm disappointed, along with a ton of other black and white, I must add, Carolina Panthers fans. And even some in the media think that he got the raw end of the stick on this one. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> if you look at it, um, he, he definitely was more than deserving for this job. I mean, statistically, uh, they improved so much after uh, Coach Rule uh, had left and he took over. Um, they went from 24th in scoring to 15th. Uh, they went from last in yards per game to seventh, uh, 17th. They went from 27th in rushing to 6th in rushing and set a, a single-game rushing record um, yeah. within the franchise. So. Um, if you want to talk about deserving, he definitely is deserving. And um, you said it, you know, players want a guy that they respect and they want to play for. And, and that's what he was. He was a man of integrity and had all the respect from everybody in that locker room. And uh, he's a Charlotte guy through and through. And I think it would have been great for him to get the job. Um, it is disappointing, but um, I do look at the fact they, they said they wanted an experienced coach that also had an offensive mindset. It seems kind of like, the, you know, Frank Wright was kind of more of that description um, but I, I will say I don't doubt uh, for a second that Steve Wilkes um, will get another head coaching opportunity because he showed and proved uh, to everyone that he's more than deserving and more than capable to lead a franchise um, to be successful. And uh, I hope he does get that opportunity because, again, um, he's more than deserving. So I just wanted to offer some quick insights uh, on this because there's a lot of strong reactions uh, coming out of, of Charlotte and, and around the uh, you know, the sport, sports world after the news of Frank Wright being hired as that next head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Um, but again, you know, definitely uh, hoping the best for Steve Wilkes and knowing that he will land somewhere because he's definitely more than deserving. Uh, but just wanted to offer a quick reaction. You got anything else before we get out of here? No, I think it's you know, going to be very interesting to see. You know, he talked about Frank Wright did offer an interview. I just uh, watched that and he talked about, uh, you know, uh, the urgency of getting coordinators in because he wants his coordinators to be involved in the position coach hiring and all that good stuff. And uh, it'd be a slow process from, from getting to know the players and reaching out to them, of course, in the off season guys all over the place, as you know, that happens in the off season. But, but I'm pulling for, for uh, Frank Wright. I'm pulling for the Panthers that they'll, they'll put this thing together. But again, and we, we, we can, 
uh, have two things true. One, I don't think I, I do think it's a good hire. Two, I think that that uh, Steve Wilkes uh, definitely got the short end of the stick uh, and was really deserving as a head coach as well. So I think both those th things are true, and hopefully the NFL though will continue to to pour into the hiring practices of the National Football League as it pertains uh, to minorities. Well, appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Uh, that way you don't miss a moment here on the Miller's Edge. Appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you all next time.